Alright, what's going on guys? Berserk 376 is finally out, and it's titled, Seas Quivering Surface and Calamitous War Shadow. And to start off this chapter, we got a beautiful colored panel right here. We got Guts, we got Puck, and we got the land of the Kushans. We actually get to see the Kushan Empire for the first time in the manga. And my god does it look gorgeous. I absolutely love the architecture, so this is a really cool spot here. I can't wait to see more of it. Hopefully it doesn't get destroyed in a few chapters, which it might, but anyway, we're probably getting ahead of ourselves, so let's get right into it. Now to start this chapter, we see Guts whirling through some water, and he's like, what? I'm being swept away. Now, this was actually shown in a previous chapter. It was a bit cryptic at the time, but it seemed very similar to the situation in which Griffith was being swept up by water when he went to see the idea of evil in the eclipse. Now, what does this all mean? Is Guts going deeper within the spiritual realm? Is he getting closer to the idea of evil, or is he getting closer to something else? We don't really know at this point. He then takes a look back and notices the ethereal form of Shirka. Now Shirka reaches out for his hand and begins to pull him out. And this is very reminiscent of the times in which Guts wore the Berserker armor. Every time that he would go further and further into the spiritual realm, Shirka would always be there to pull him out. She would always be that voice and that light, the thing that saved him from complete darkness. And with that, we then notice that Guts is shackled up. And it seems like he's regained some of his consciousness, his eyes beginning to open up. So it seems like Shirka managed to save him once again. Now, I gotta say, looking at this scene right here with Guts shackled up, does it not remind you of when Griffith was shackled up? Having lost everything, having lost all hope, not knowing what the purpose of his life was anymore? It seems like this is a parallel that was set up to make it look very similar to Griffith's situation. Now, is it possible that Guts is mirroring Griffith because he will also be faced with a situation in which he'll have to determine whether or not to use the Baelid or not? I'm not really sure. But anyway, in the next panel, we finally get to see the land of the Kushans. And what an absolutely magnificent castle this is here, guys. Finally, we've been wondering what this place has looked like all along, and we get to see it in all its glory, so it looks absolutely fantastic. I really love this. Now, Rickard is wondering why they're keeping Gut shackled up, but Salad explains that he's far too dangerous to be left to his own devices. And it's not so much just for their safety, but for his own safety. He's like a wild animal at this point, so they really can't predict what he's going to do. Daiba then comes onto the scene and wants the two to come with him. They then go to a room with Shirka lying on a bed. Now, she's completely out of it. It's the same kind of trance that she goes into when she goes into the astral realm. And obviously we know from Guts' vision that she's going to save Guts right now. But it seems like she might have gone too deep into the astral layers. She might have lost her own consciousness to the darkness. And even Daiba seems quite impressed with her powers. Now, Slat sympathizes with Roderick and the various mages. He's lost his homeland too, so he can understand what they're going through right now. Now, Daiba is very fascinated by the fact that Shirka can reign in the Beast of Darkness. And among all the foes that he fought over the years, Guts was the only man that was equal to him in battle. And upon hearing this, Rickard is actually quite shocked by this. Now, Daiba turns his attention to Slat and says that the mages are of great interest to him, and he wants to take them under his wing for his own purposes. Now, of course, I made a video about this in the past, that Daiba has some very nefarious practices. He ripped fetuses from women's wounds and turned them into the Daka. He then created a man-made baylet, used amniotic fluid from said women to fill the vat, and through dark magic, thusly created Shiva, the most terrifying thing that existed within the physical realm. So we have to be asking ourselves here, what intentions does he have with the mages? Is it purely to stop Griffith and the demon army? Or does he have other intentions? Does he have more nefarious intentions like he did in the past? And even the other mages seem a little bit concerned about this. They have some trepidation. Now, Roderick wants to know what's going to happen next, and Salad explains that they're all going to be conscripted into the military. Now, it is very interesting because the Guts Party, the Mages, and the Kushans all have one thing in common. They all have a bone to pick with Griffith, and the fact that they have all met at this place in time might signal something important. Might signal that this is fate and that this is a job that they need to do together. Now, Rickard notices Puck on Isidro's shoulder and tries to say hello for a little bit. He then wonders where Casca is and what happened to Guts. He decides to brush it aside for the time being, but he thinks to himself, it has to have been Griffith. But how? Why? 
Now, the Kushians are recruiting various troops and stockpiling arms because they're set to go to war against Griffith, the Falcon of Light. And so this seems like a very tall order, and it also seems like the climax of the story itself. It seems like everything that we've seen so far is finally building to this one moment. Griffith has the city of Falconia, he has the demon army, and now we have the Guts party with the Kushans and the mages. Each side is set, each side has its own advantages and disadvantages, and now it looks like it's going to be an all-out war. Now of course we would think that Griffith has the advantage given that he's a member of the God Hand, but maybe Daiba and maybe the Kushans have some tricks up their sleeves. Now Griffith has power that can change the world on a fundamental level. He had the power to bring about Falconia, and now he leads a demon army that's on the doorsteps of the Kushan Empire. And yet he is fearful. He is fearful of that which lies beyond his reason, beyond the demonic. And that explains why Elfhelm was wiped out. So the astral realm has both dark and light aspects. Griffith went towards the dark side, the god hand. The Baelids themselves seem to be a magnet towards the darkness. Whereas the mages were able to cultivate positivity. They bathed in the light and they used their powers for creation rather than destruction. Now it also seems like the reason that Griffith is going to destroy the Kushans is because they have some knowledge of the astral realm as well. But perhaps it's some sort of intertwined knowledge. Maybe it's both light and dark. Maybe it possesses some quality that Griffith is unaware of or unable to control. And because of that, he wants to eliminate it so it doesn't pose a threat to him anymore. And because Salad is aware of this, he doesn't want to sit around and wait for Griffith to destroy him like he did to Elfhelm. He wants to take the initiative and attack right away. So that's the end of the chapter, but we have to be asking ourselves a few questions. What exactly do they have in store for Guts? Daiba is very interested in Guts. He definitely wants to manipulate that power in some way. And he knows that Shirka has some sort of hold on Guts. She can rein him in when need be. Does Daiba know of a way to harness Guts' power and accentuate it? Or possibly possess it for himself? And what other sort of magic do the Kushans possess that they can go up against Griffith with? Because let's be honest, I mean, some soldiers and some elephants just aren't going to do in this battle. They're going to need some powerful magic. They're going to need some magical creatures on their side, and they got to be a lot stronger than the Pishasha that we saw at Virtanis Harbor. Now, of course, having the mages on their side is a key advantage. But like I said earlier, the mages are a little bit apprehensive. Are they going to be willing to go along with Daiba and the Kushan's plans? Or are they going to be resistant to that? It's hard to say. They are mad at Griffith, that's for sure, because he took their home away from them. But they don't really know whether or not they can trust the Kushans or not, so they're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place. And finally, what is going on with Shirka? It looks like she was able to save Guts, but can she save herself at this point? Has she gone too deep into the astral realm? And I was also kind of thinking to myself too, if Donnan and the other magical creatures are trapped within the astral realm, does that mean that Shirka can find them in some way? Is there some method in which she can bring them back to the physical realm again? Can she create some kind of sanctuary that mimics Elfhelm that allows them to come back into the physical realm? Because if she could do that, that would definitely tip the scales in their favor. But I'm speculating quite a bit here, guys. Tell me what you guys thought of this chapter. Tell me what you think is going to happen next. And uh, yeah, if you got time, please subscribe, like the video, and I'll catch you on the flip side.